one. to another episode of the Be It Brothers podcast. My name is Robert, joined by Steve, Brian, Logan, and Squirrel. What is going on, guys? Howdy, howdy, son, man. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be like the, that's got to be the signature thing for me when I get on. All right. So it's got to be the hello. Just pop in there and go, yellow. yellow. <laughs> <laughs> got a special, a, another special episode tonight. Got another guest. So hopefully we can get some uh, good information off of them. I think we will. But um, yeah, hopefully we can do it and see how it goes for sure. No yeah. doubt. But when, you want to tell us a little bit about this special guest? Well, remember, you put me on the spot now, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, Daniel M. Jackson. He's a spirit medium. And so he can, he can basically... From what I've looked up on him, he can he can talk to archangels, spirits, um, and it's not to like how some are just weird about it. He tries to help you, like be a better version of yourself. Um, so yeah, and, and if you have any questions or anything like that for him, obviously comment and let us, and, and we'll ask him, you know, for you, and then uh, we'll put his his information up at the end of the podcast on our page, so that way you know if you want to do it in your own privacy you can uh you can look them up all righty all right all right all right so i will uh i'll add him to the call and then we'll uh robert uh, robert to go from there no whoa 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 whoa, whoa. <laughs> you don't be throwing me like that in the bus we'll go from there all right guys yeah let me all right <laughs> Is it Colin? Yep. Hello. Hello. Oh, it says Danny was busy. Oh. Man, cool. that ain't good, guys. Hold on. Not good. <laughs> okay. Hold on, guys. We'll try again. All right. Well, hold on. All righty. He's going to mess with you, like, hold up. <laughs> Leave me alone. You got, yeah, you got to hold on here. If it doesn't answer this time, I don't know what to tell you, but hold on. This this is around that time where I should find some background music to start playing. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Like elevator music or something. I was literally just about to say that. Hey, Daniel. Daniel, how are you? Uh, not too shabby. How about yourselves? We're good. We're good. good. We're doing, doing pretty good. good. Not too bad so at all. Are we doing just all audio, or do you actually want to do video? Um, I, Robert, do you think we can do video? I mean, I it's... prefer I prefer it if we kept it as audio. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, it's. I don't have a webcam on okay. me right now. That's fine. We can do audio. No One day. So we're pretty excited about you being on today. So, oh and a lot of people. That's, that's why, yeah. I, I've watched. Uh, I've watched a couple of your uh, your other interviews, and I was I was I was laughing pretty good there. So, uh, yeah, I I got a, a bit of a sense of humor, but I'll tell you, the only reason I have the well, I've always had a sense of humor in my life, but uh, and it's pretty dry, pretty sarcastic. But when you see as many dead people as I do see in a day, yeah, gotta, I'd say yeah. You gotta you gotta have that sense of humor. Yeah, yeah gotta gotta me, find some I, light in the darkness. Yeah, I, I see so many dead people. It's like being in a room with a thousand people, except nobody leaves, and more just keep coming in. Now I know. Well, as far as what I've I've, I've looked up, you do you do not like being called a psychic, correct? Absolutely, because when okay. you 
when you use the term psychic, then next thing you know, somebody's coming up to you and saying, hey, what am I thinking? And I say, I don't know what you're thinking, but I think you're an asshole. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. so then, then I usually then I usually read them real quick and I go, and everybody else actually thinks you're an asshole too. And then I go into this whole field and they go, How did you know that? And I said, Because I'm actually a fucking medium and you're talking to a fucking medium, I'm not a psychic. <laughs> I can read you and find out information about you and, and they tell me you actually are an asshole, so maybe I ought to knock that shit off and I go, Oh well, you know, I go, yeah, I'll deal with them. Great. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I'm so I do have a question for you. I'm I'm not a, I'm, I guess I'm really not knowledgeable on the what a medium is. Are you able to you know describe what it is for me? Uh, for me, so all all mediums are different. Uh, we all have uh, different abilities. Some of them are similar, but not all of them are completely the same. Uh, but psychics are are in tune with people who are alive. Whereas uh, mediums are uh, in tune with people who have passed away, and and but also in tune with the people who are alive. So most mediums get psychic messages, but psychics don't have mediumship abilities. So yeah, yeah. and for that, what I mean by that is, um, I see, hear, feel, smell, and communicate with uh, spirit all day long. It never turns off. It never goes away, uh, and. But there are other mediums out there who don't actually see spirit, whereas I do. Uh, but I don't just see people. I see dogs, cats, horses, cows, fishes, fishes, fish. Uh, I see everything. But I also see, I also see other things too that are not of uh, what we would consider uh, of this world. Uh, we just call them alien because they are just alien to us. But right. I don't other, I don't just see spirit as well. Uh, I'm also able to see into other dimensions. I can also uh, do what's called remote viewing. I don't have control over it. I just, with the abilities that I have, it's kind of like uh, when you order a cable and you you ask for a certain amount of channels and then a bunch of channels come along with it. It's the same thing. It just it just turns on. I'll be I'll close my eyes and I'll see something going on somewhere else. But to the point, I know that it's actually happening because I. I had it once where I was in meditation when I closed my eyes, I saw outside of my own home, I saw my truck, my wife's car, I saw the kids playing down the street, and then I also saw a car drive by, and even though I was in my house, my consciousness is on the outside and seeing all this stuff, but in my house, I actually heard the car drive by. Wow. Now, do you yeah. ever get like, with you saying you, you, you basically see them all day long, do you ever get like tired of it? You know what I'm saying? Like uh, seeing them all day long, or is it just something that you've grown used to? Yeah, I just grown used. To, you, you know how when, How old are you guys? I'm 37. I'm 35. Oh, 30, 30, 35. So 34. Like, you remember 30 years ago when your mom was feeding you green beans, and then 30 years later you like green beans? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You just get yeah. You just get used to it pretty much, and right. uh, but but that's not the only things that I see. So, but yeah. Right. I, I, I've been seeing spirit since I was three years old. My whole family experienced it, uh, but it wasn't until after my teen years uh, that my my family was no longer seeing it. They, it. And they were seeing it pretty much because we were living in an area in New Jersey that was right next to a battlefield. I mean, our town, was, the battlefield was in it and they had a little hospital in there. It's where the Hessians fought. And uh, so we were seeing those types of things where like my sister, and my mom were in the bathroom helping my sister get ready for for school and they went to look in this full length mirror and when they did there was another woman standing in the mirror and she had a colonial outfit on so oh, <clears throat> we were seeing things like that but also seeing ashtrays fly off the so yeah that went on until my until my teen years and then when i my mom and dad and i and my one brother we moved down to delaware no one else was seeing anything and it was just me and it just continued over. But I mean, I was having other experiences too, where I was playing in a band. I was playing in a, in a hair band back in the eighties. I mean, we were, we were just a band, but uh, you know, I, I had the uh, the long hair and the big poofy hair and the, the zebra striped uh, spandex just to prove it, because I thought I was cool, but yeah, it wasn't so much. But uh, <laughs> uh, I came home from a gig one night and I uh, I, I laid in bed like four or five o'clock in the morning, and when I did something laid down next to me like three or four times and i kept rolling over to take a look at what it was and then that fifth time 
when I rolled over, whatever was there picked up the blanket that I had on top of me and brought it all the way up to the ceiling and shook it above me, and then it dropped it on me. And then from that point on, two years for the next two years, guys, I slept on the fucking couch because I was scared shitless. So. Uh, hey, I would have honestly done the same thing. That would have scared me too. Yeah, I don't blame yeah. you one bit. But I, I've seen other things too. Like I was with a girlfriend one time. We were watching Rocky Horror Picture Show in my bedroom. She was at the foot of the bed, and I was at the uh, at the head of the bed. And something big and white, maybe four feet long, about two feet thick, kind of snaked its way out of my closet and across the room. And then it got halfway across the room and it just disappeared. But then my girlfriend turned around. And she said, did you see that? I said, hell yeah, I saw it. I said, let's get the fuck out of here. But uh, oh, well, done the same thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I, but I've seen stuff like that my entire life. Uh, I remember one time my, my grandfather who was living with us at the time, went to visit with my uncle for a couple of weeks. And I was in his room checking out pictures of, uh, of him and my grandmother because she had already passed away. And then I just laid on his bed and I started to fall asleep. And my sister was down for a visit. She had this pet ferret with her. And um, I hated that ferret because uh, I went to visit her one time and the damn thing ran up my leg and bit me on the ball. But, uh, <clears throat> so I was sitting there and laying on the bed and I hear this squeaking noise, and I think it's the ferret, and I keep telling the ferret to be quiet. And then one time I sat up, and when I did, a uh, rocking chair in my grandfather's room was actually rocking back and forth. That's what was making the noise. And my uh, the spirit of my grandmother was actually sitting in it. And, wow. and she, she turned around and looked at me, and her eyes got big, and my eyes got big, and all of a sudden, boom, she just disappeared. But wow. that's the way I see things. I When, when I'm anywhere that i'm at like right now like i'm sitting in my uh in our little studio we have here because we also have a podcast so, so if i look at the wall or if i look at anything if like the walls here are white uh i no longer see them as white walls anymore i i see the i see the, the wall itself but i also see the color blue within it so uh and what i'm actually seeing is energy so energy is in my regular vision anymore Everything right. that I look at, I see this blue mist in it. Even when I um, when I go outside at nighttime, I don't see the stars anymore. That went away about four years ago. Uh, all I see is the moon and a blue black sky, and I just see faces in it everywhere. So like if I wow. concentrate on the wall right now, and I, I stare at the wall, uh, then I see this dude that's standing here in my room. Uh, he's got uh, black hair. Uh, he's got blue eyes. Uh, he's got uh, that's kind of weird. He's got uh, like the like back in the seventies, like the mutton chops on his face. But uh, yeah, yeah. He's just in there. <clears throat> and his name is Taylor. But yeah, so uh, but so, is, so as, as far as you like, um, I don't know if you like, and, and believe me, correct me if I'm wrong. Can you read like energies around people that you're talking to, or do you have to see him like in person? Uh, well, yeah, I, I can. I, I do a lot of readings for people, uh, and I'll do them uh, via Zoom or what have you, and I can look mm -hmm. right around them and see who's with them. But, uh, but if, when I'm in person, I get stronger energies coming through. Like, um, <clears throat> I did a reading for this woman one time. I was at this festival, and she came over and sat with me, her and her husband. And I said, let me hold your hand. Because when I hold their hand, I can I can see more of what's around me. Right. Uh, and when I held her hand, um, I, I asked her, I said, do you guys have a farm? And they looked at me like, what are you talking about? Now, I found out within the reading that they were just trying to see if I was the real deal. But uh, I said, well, you have a horse with you. And the horse is kind of like brown and white, like patchy, like mm -hmm. a cow would be. I said, but the horse doesn't have a regular mane on its head. It's got what looks like somebody took a wig and cut out the ears and put this wig on their head. Like a, it's a blonde wig. And when I said that, her husband started flipping through his phone. <clears throat> and he's looking for something. I thought he was just talking to somebody. And I said, when I see your horse, this horse, it's like he's in a stall. And he comes out of the stall. He comes around in a circle. He comes about. He comes up to you. And I said, he puts his head on your shoulder. And keeps telling me that you're his mommy. And she's like, really? And I said, yeah. I said, this is kind of strange. And then the guy stops his phone. He looks at me. He says, is this the horse? I said, yeah. What's with the freaking wig on his head? And they said, well, we had this horse. And we had a, uh, 
we had someone do a portrait of the horse. And when we got the picture back, it was this with this wig on its head. And we were really angry over that. And I said, why are you so angry? He said, because we paid $4,000 for this picture. And hmm. I was like, yeah, I would be angry too. I said, what did you do with the picture? He said, it's in our closet. And I was like, oh, that, I said, yeah, I wouldn't put that up either. It looks kind of silly. He said, yeah. And I, and I said, uh, I said, uh, <clears throat> so the, I said, the horse keeps coming around, puts his head on your shoulder. And, uh, and uh, I said, what's up with that? She said, every morning I would go out to our, our stalls. Now, earlier when I said, did they have a farm? They said, huh? But they had a farm. How did I know that? So, uh, so uh, she, I said, I said, so what do, what do you do with the horse? She said, I go out to the stalls every morning and I would open up the stall. And, uh, and that horse would walk out of the stall and circle me and come around and put his head on my shoulder. And I said, that's wow, crazy. That's, and, that's and really she something. Said, and, then she's, and then she started to tear up. And I said, what's wrong? She said, our horse just died two weeks ago. And then I looked him in the face. And as I tell everybody, I said, I can't make this shit up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they, they literally stood up and gave me the, the hardest hug I'd ever got in my life. But... Uh, but yeah, I told I told them why the horse is here. But uh, but yeah, uh, that's the type of things that I see. Now, All can you home. see like um, can you see like past life stuff like like you know the reincarnation type deal? And I don't know if you uh, believe well, in that or well well of course I believe in it because you know why okay. I believe in it because you reincarnated. Everyone that I'm talking to right now is all reincarnated, and the reason you have is because we are here to learn lessons and fulfill right. purpose. And if they want us to, the, the people, <clears throat> the, the person, more or less the energy who created us, wants us to come here and learn and wants us to fulfill a purpose. But that purpose is, you're not going to be, your, your purpose is not for you to become a doctor or a lawyer. You're going mm -hmm. to fulfill your purpose while being human. And that purpose is very simple. It's the same for everybody. If you have somebody who tells you that, oh, my purpose is to do this or that because I'm so special. Well, they're using their ego for that, and that's a bunch of bullshit. Okay? Right. Your purpose is we are here to help each other, just helping. Not just because you can, but because you should. But in a physical way, someone's going to come up to you and say, hey, uh, you know, I'm lost. And it's up to you to use your free will, your, your decision making, to, start to decide whether or not you're actually going to fulfill your purpose by helping them. And if you do, great. But if you're one of those people who walks around and says, oh, I don't care about anybody. My life's about me, blah, blah, blah. Screw everybody, whatever. It, you know, then you're, you're on the alternative path. Now, we all come back over and over and over again just for a simple fact that because we're not fulfilling our purpose enough. But those people who walk around hating on everybody all the time, they come back a lot. Uh, right. So, um, but... Uh, the average person comes back between 26 and 29 times. Uh, and I've, I've done some readings for some people, uh, for one lady, um, <clears throat> she had been here 43 times. Uh, so, uh, and she, uh, see, and she was, had to come back again. So, and I, I knew, I already knew she had to come back again. Uh, but she had asked me, have I fulfilled my purpose? And I said, no. And she said, well, what else can I do? And I said, and I told her in this way. And I, maybe you guys can figure out what I'm about to say. But I told her, I said, no, I'm sorry, but you've run out of time. When I said she ran out of time, what do you guys think that means? Do you mean like she ran out of ran out part of time? time. Like ran, out of ran out of price? Yeah, well, ran out of time to fulfill her purpose. So what do you guys, right. what do you guys think that means? I'm, I'm not too sure, honestly. Like, I, I think uh, more or less that, like, she had so many chances to, you know, make her own path the way she's supposed to. And then she didn't, you know, fulfill each and every, any one of them. So she basically just, you know, she's done. <laughs> yeah, in a bigger sense. When I told her she was running out of time, I meant she was actually going to die soon. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, see that? And, and that, I think, like, as far as, like, I believe in medium stuff like that. I, it just that was the biggest thing. I don't ever want to find out from someone else what I'm gonna. Do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, I, I want to find out myself when it happens. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. And it's always a scary. I don't want to find that out. From, you know, it, it's that's one thing. I was like, I do not want to ask him that question because well, uh, I don't want to know. My 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 mother-in-law, uh, who had stage four cancer, uh, was 
had been going through it. She'd been through the ringer. And, she, and so my, my wife and I were with her and she asked me one time, she didn't want to ask me in a, in a direct way. So she said, can you ask your people, you know, my people, she said, can you ask your people when I'm, I'm going to leave? Cause I'm, I'm tired of life. And I'm just, I don't want to be sick anymore and stuff like that. And I told my wife, I said, you know, you know, I don't like to really do this, but uh, mm -hmm. she said, could you just give her an answer or get her something? So I said, sure. So I went back in this room by myself. And I came back out five minutes later and I told her, I said, Dolores, write everything down that you need to write down because you have two weeks and she died two wow. weeks a day. <clears throat> wow. See that, I think that's my biggest fear. It's like, <clears throat> if, if you told me like you have, you have, 40 50 years i'd be fine yeah. with that but if sure. you say you have a week or two weeks then i, I that's my big like i don't want to know that <laughs> I, I have, i'd rather um, just i have 27 and a half years left I, i'm wow. so I, i'm actually going to die when I'm, I'm 55 now i'm going to die when i'm 83 my birthday is in november but i'm going to pass away in august on the third week on a wednesday night wow yeah but and can you but tell I, like I, how you're gonna die yeah, I'm just going to fall asleep and not Okay, wake so up. just like... But wake, but wake okay. up. Because what happens in that moment is what happens for everyone is you will you will go to sleep like everybody does. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you just you go out, you know, the lights are up. And then you wake up, you'll stand up out of your body, you'll look down, you'll see your body, you'll take a step to the left, you will look to the right, and you will see a light turn on. And everybody gets a personal light. Now, there are two actual lights. You get a personal light, but there's another light that shines all the time so that all spirit can see it. And at that, that actual light is within a physical body. It's, a, it's just another soul. And it's in a physical body, so it can shine all the time. And then that soul within that body actually crosses spirit over into the light physically by telling them where to go and what to do and all that stuff. And because when it's speaking, all spirit can hear that. Now, spirit... Spirit themselves can actually um, can actually block it out because it sounds like static more or less to them. Like listen to a, a nine billion people and they hear it all, they can actually they can actually tune it out uh, so they don't have to listen. But this one particular soul that's in this one body, they can't tune it out for the reason that it has to be heard and seen all the time. So they always know where they can go if they decide when or when it is that they want to cross over because when you do cross over it's your choice no one's asking for forgiveness from god or anything like that you don't mm -hmm. have to do that because the people who want you to who want you to think about that stuff are the same people who want to tell you how to live your life the way they want you to live it and give them 10 percent. how did they know well, exactly about, yeah how did they know about 10 percent back then because the right. people who, who wrote all that stuff in the books and all that stuff king uh, and queens Kings and queens, absolutely. Yep. They're, they're, they're bullshit artists. That's what they're. They're really yeah. good car salesmen, cheap car salesmen too. But uh, <clears throat> how you know it doesn't work? Because uh, how many religions are there, and how and they all got their own way. And but what do they all have? They all have power control over everybody else. So uh, right. all you have to do is just not listen to them. But yeah, that that soul, um, that particular soul. Uh, see, you guys, when you when you're done here you'll see that light and then you'll either walk in or you don't. And if you walk in, you go to what we call heaven where there's no pain, anger, sorrow, grief, guilt, all that mess you learned how to have here. Or you remain here as an earthbound spirit. And when you do that, whatever age you die at, you will remain that age there. So if you died at 79 years old and you're walking all crooked and stuff like that, you will remain that in that, in that realm <clears throat> because you chose not to go home. Because this is not home, okay? So, so okay. you won't be in any pain, but you'll still be kind of slow moving around because you're 79 years old. And uh, But right. when you cross over into the light, you go back to what is more of a, it's, it's not an age, but more of a feeling of like 30 years old. But if you, gotcha. die, if you die at like four or five years old, you would just grow up into that. And then it all depends on whether or not you have to come back too, because... No one goes to heaven right away. You got to go to a holding place, and that holding place, they're just going to go over your life with you. It's it's like a life review. They're not going to judge you because no one gets judged. I mean, ju you judge yourself a thousand times and say, "Why does God need to do it once more?" Because He just doesn't. Again, it's those people who tell you who want to have control of your life, but uh, but they just go over your life, and it's at that moment they will let you know if you have to come back again. And if you die before the age of thirty years old, you would come back eight years later. 
If you die over the age of 30 years old, you come back 80 years later. And it all has to be doing with one thing so you're not recognized. But you are sort of recognized in another way where you look a little bit the same because every time you come back, you come back just a different version of you. That's why I tell people don't mess with 23andMillionAncestry.com because the person you're looking up from 100 years ago that looks similar like you was just you 100 years ago. So you've wow. been all over this world. You've been here many, many times. So don't mess with the, I don't mess with the whole, uh, like you're saying, the, the past life regression. Because right. here's the reason why. All your lives were important. But if your past life, the one before you, was so important, you would have fulfilled your purpose and you wouldn't be here now. So why worry right. about it? People True. want to worry about it because they want to have a freaking story for their friends. So yeah. What? Oh, my mom and my, my past grandpa a uh, hundred years ago was royalty. You know what? You've been here so many times. Everybody's been related to royalty because you've been related to every single person because right now you're related to everybody on the face of this earth now. We just don't realize that because you come from the same family as I do. You come from the soul family. That's why right. we're all related to each other. So, but, yeah. that one, but that one light that I was talking about that's always here and glowing and, and, and shining all the time so all spirit can see it, it's me. You're like the guiding what? light, you mean? Yeah, so, so the light is shining to tell all spirit to go to heaven. When people leave and go to heaven, they go through a portal. It's me. When they come back here to visit, they're coming through me. When they are being born here, they're actually coming through me. It's just my soul does not go home. <clears throat> my soul just jumps from body to body to body. It was actually in my grandfather before it was in me uh, because the spirit that I speak to told me that's the way it was. And I just, so when I was being born, my mom and dad, my, my grandfather wanted to know when I was going to be born. Why? Because he also knew that he was this as well. So he, I have two brothers and a sister, and he was concerned with them, but not so much. So um, my, my dad called him up and said, hey, it's time to come to the hospital. He's being born. And my grandfather got ready to come to the hospital and got dressed and had a heart attack and died. And then oh, his man. soul left his body and came into me, and now here I am. Because that's the way it works. It's just when that one body expires, the soul moves into another one. It never goes home. So... Uh, yeah, when I, when I say people have been here 26, between 26 and 29 times, mine's been here over 23,000 times. Wow. I need to go home. I've been here since the beginning. I just, I, I only know this because I didn't know it as a child, but I know this now because now that I accepted my abilities, this is what they tell me. But they're not going to tell me that if I don't, if I'm not okay with it. Right. So you have to be okay with it. And that's what I had to do with, it's like, it's almost like coming out of the closet. I had to, I had to say I'm okay with this and, and I want to move forward with it. And when I decided to do that, I, I started getting more and more information. And now I and about three and a half years ago, I was told this. So, uh, but and I, I see it. I mean, so I like if I just sit there and do nothing and concentrate, I see these clouds just moving into my face. That's people crossing over. Uh, it happens physically. I was in a room with my sister one time talking. We were in this kind of low lit room and we were just talking and it looked like uh, lightning went off in the room. And she was like, what the hell is that? And I was like, oh, that's just somebody jumping in. She said, jumping in. I said, yeah. Just jump. She said, oh, crossing over. I said, yeah, because she knows I have this and everybody knows I have this. And uh, she was like, again, same thing. How the hell do you get used to that? I said, I don't know. You see it enough. You just do. It right. Just, it just happens. And yeah, so she was like, that was crazy. And she said, look like lightning just went off in here. I said, yeah, welcome to my world. I said, so uh, yeah, it just just happened. So I, I, yeah, I am the light that shines in the heaven. But, I, so, but, but it's only in one soul. There's no other medium in this world that can claim that. And you'll never hear anybody claim, that will claim it. Why? Because they just freaking can't. Because right. it's not them. So if I uh now this is just a question if not that that's probably, if if I put it on video of me right now could you tell me if like there was a spirit like spirits around me or anything like that? Oh absolutely yes I can see okay. your, I can I would be able to see your aura too. Okay I'm gonna well 
I'm gonna put this on video. Just, I, I just want, I, I've never had it done. So <laughs> I want to, I want to see. All right, just, yep, there you go. Yeah. Oh, look at you, you handsome son of a bitch. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still seeing him? Put the camera back down. I can't see your head. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are uh, you okay? Um, Oh, there's a lady standing behind you. Uh, she's on your right side. She's, so she's over your right shoulder. Yeah, right there. Okay. Um, um, her name is Linda. Uh, Linda has, she's got brown hair, dark brown hair, like a, like a, like a chocolate brown hair, uh, but not black, but like a dark brown you know, the beautiful chocolate brown hair that all men love. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's parted. Um, so it's parted over to her left hand, to her left side, parted. So it kind of covers her left eye a little bit. Um, let me find out how old she is. So when I, when I ask other questions, I get touched on my face for yes or no answers. Right. Um, she died when she was 47. Um, she died in 1863. Um, she was a nurse or a doctor. She died of, of what we would consider a Hodgkin's disease. And she is your great aunt. And that's why she's here. Wow. Uh, and why she's here is because she is being a spirit guide for you. Um, you won't find, oh, that's, oh, that's strange. You won't find any record of her. I wish you could. Um, so she's here to be a spirit guide for you. So when you wake up in the morning and you make decisions to do things, mm -hmm. uh, you say, okay, I'm going to go to the mall today. That's only partially you doing that. She's actually doing that other part because she wants you to follow through and, and actually do these things because you're going to have experiences and meet people like that, that you are supposed to be doing. Uh, oh, man. Why do you do this? Um, uh, but uh, and the, she's a little um, hesitant with that stuff like that because um, I'm being told that she says you uh, you like to talk yourself out of things. Uh, all right, true, true, <laughs> true. Yeah, you 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 talk yourself out of uh, things on a frequent basis. Not not on a not on a reason that uh, most people would do it because they don't think they're good enough. It's not absolutely anything to do with it. Uh, but you just talk yourself out of you. You go to make a decision, and you go. Then you turn around and go. No, nah, nah, I'm going to do something else. And you do. And but yeah. I, I'm just here to tell you when you do that, you're you're putting yourself on the alternative path. And when you put your own, yourself on alternative path, then you're not doing everything that you're supposed to be doing in your life. Um, at this moment, right now, you have still yet to fulfill your purpose. But but you have time. <laughs> oh, thank God. Thank you, do, God. you do have time. All right, um, all right. Thank God. You actually have, um, I mean, I could tell you how much time you actually have. You oh, to. boy. Um, <clears throat> how, how old are you now? I'll be 37 this year. Okay. Yeah. I, all right. Yeah, go ahead. Do you want to know no. how long you're going to, I mean, do you want to know how long you're going to, how old you're going to be before you check out? Uh, yeah, yeah. 82. Okay, yeah, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's fine. That's a good number. You know, that, that's, that's, at a, that's at a stage where you're you're still able to do things for yourself and, right. and no, no one else is wiping your ass for you. Well, you I know? literally almost cracked myself when you were about to tell me, so. Well, you know, I, that's okay. I'm 55 and I shit myself all the time. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you get to the point where you're just changing your pants and you're going, whatever. No big deal. Right, right. But, uh, Robert, I want yeah. you to do it, dude. Uh, yeah, how, how how did you do that, Stevie? Like I didn't see anything like on the live. How I don't know. So how you... 
if you're on your phone at the very bottom there's a camera looking symbol just push that and you'll go live you want me to put it on the live yeah yeah dude i i, I want to I, I mean, kinda, what he said about me was very true. Like, talking myself out of stuff was very true. So, yeah, I want you guys to do it. I'm very well, curious. I, I'll favor? do it real quick. Can you do me a favor with that what? talking yourself out of things? Can you do me a favor? What's that? Knock it the fuck off, all right? Absolutely. <laughs> I, you know what? Dude, I, I, you know what? It's very true that I do that on a daily basis. But, here's so, thing, yeah. Here's the thing, re the reason why. And if you're all paying attention, pay attention closely. I want you to fulfill your purpose. Mm -hmm. And the reason I want you to do that is because I don't want you to come back again. The reason I don't want you to come back again is because by the time you do pass away at 82, the next mm -hmm. time you would come back would be, would be 80 years from that. Oh, and so yeah. Place, that, yeah. And this place is going to be like Mad Max at that moment. Right. Okay? So I don't want you to have to be here for that. Now, it's not that you would remember your life here, but I don't want you to live through it. So do me right. a favor, get it done and don't. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, you're, we are all, everyone in this room, are going to live through some of that beginning stages of Mad Max stuff. You're just going to. Right. Because it's coming. So two and a half years prior to COVID coming, I, I'm able to do something called channeling where I sit across from somebody, I hold their hands and a message comes through and they start speaking. And mm -hmm. two and a half years prior to COVID coming, I was told COVID was coming. I was told about a virus and uh, the first stock market crash. So I was going on, on this festival circuit and I was telling people, the people I thought who could handle it. And then afterwards, when it actually came, I got about 20 messages from people who said they were glad they listened to me because I told them how to prepare. Because at that moment, we already had enough toilet paper for three years because we knew it was coming. So we knew exactly what was coming. So, and then after that, I got about 20 more messages from people who said, I wish I would have listened to you. I thought I was, thought you were crazy. I said, I'm not fucking crazy. You're gonna listen to me now. I right. was telling people last year of what happening right now with the, with the high gas prices and the soon to be food shortage that's coming. And I was telling people that at, in February of last year of what was coming for this year. When I say riots are coming, mm -hmm. I mean riots like the riots from 2020 are nothing compared because the riots that are coming now is no longer going to be about us and about black and white. It's going to be us and them. Okay. So, it's going to get bad, so make sure you yeah. guys are prepared for that. Because now, when you say when you say uh, as far as the rights go, when you say us and them, like who's the the them that you that you're talking about? Government, the controllers. Government, not, okay, okay. Not just government, the actual controllers of this world, which are which are big corporation. The, okay. the government is government is pretty much just puppets, uh, but the big corporation. Yeah, things are eventually going to go south, so uh, make sure you're prepared for that. Okay. I, I have Absolutely. the uh, I have it up on live. So when you when you guys want to do the video thing, go ahead, dude. You know. I'm 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 kind of freaked out that he knew. All, so yeah, go ahead. Like I <laughs> like it. Don't I be, like it. I'm glad I'm not out. dying soon. But I, I'm just because, like I said, I've never. I don't know. I've never talked to a medium. I've never, you know, did any of that. So like you just tell me like, yeah, you talk yourself out of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I do every single I day. Can, I can get my stuff like that, but I can all, but I can only get quantity of your life. I have no control right. or, or the quality of your life. But as I always tell people with the quality of your life, if you take a cucumber and you put it in vinegar, what do you get? Right. Okay. You a pickle. Get, you get a pickle. <laughs> you get a you pickle. Yeah. Means? Stop drinking. That's what it means. But, uh, but, oh, um, oh, yeah, because that's, that's what you do to yourself. But, I mean, you have to know what you do to yourself young is, is going to affect you when you get old. Do you want to be in a wheelchair when you get old? No. So you right. have control of that. That's, I mean, okay. we have some control over it, but our bodies are fallible. They do fall apart on us because... No one's meant to be live to be 150 years old. Besides that, at right. that point, it's going to hurt the pee anyway. So who wants to do that? So exactly. As I always tell people, there are two rules in this world. As long as you comprehend these rules and you follow these rules, you're going to appreciate your life a whole heck of a lot more. Plus, you're going to appreciate everyone else's life around you.
because you should not be, be repay, uh, you should not be paying your respects for someone at their funeral. Pay respects for them while they're still alive. Exactly. You know, so exactly. The two rules are rule number one is people die every day. I'll, I'll be right back. And rule number two is you can't change rule number one. When it's your time to go, it just is. Yeah, that's true. So why go out uh, in this world and just uh, do a bunch of crazy shit that may get you, uh, you know, in some type of damage to your body and, and what's going on in your life? You, we don't have to do that, but we just we choose to do that. So, hey, look at you, you handsome son of a bitch. So, you know, I was, I, this ain't about spirits or anything like that, okay? But uh, I wanna I wanna say if I would knew you three years ago when COVID was going to hit. You say you bought three years of toilet paper, right? Yes, I still have it. I I don't have just toilet have... paper. I got ton. I have tons of. I got seventy eight cans of spam in my house because I know when shit's going to hit the fan. That's right. right. See now, when I knew when COVID was going to hit, toilet paper ran out of our little town like crazy. If I would have knew you, I would have had you shit me some toilet paper. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we 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 were getting steady shipments. At that time, right before that, we were getting steady shipments from Amazon of toilet paper, paper towel, medicines, uh, medical stuff, uh, buckets of food, everything, everything, everything. Because you're going to need it. You're going to need it because it's going to get. Because what's going to happen is gas prices are going to be so high. Then you're going to have to pay for gas, and then since you're paying more money for gas. You're not going to be able to afford the food that's out there because food prices are also going to get high because right. food, is becoming, food is already starting to become scarce. So when you have high gas prices and high food prices, which one are you going to pay for first? And then right. either, whatever one you pay for first, you're not going to be able to afford the other one. So what's going to happen at that point? Everyone's going to go freaking crazy right. because they can't afford anything. So what are they going to do? They're going to take to the streets and start protesting because yep. there's going to there's eventually going to be a point where there's going to be pure anarchy, and there's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. People are going to come to your house and ask for food. They're going to ask the first time. The second time, they're not asking. Right. So what are you going to do to make sure that you keep them from taking what you have or take or or taking control of your family. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going out swinging. Absolutely. Oh, so am I. Absolutely. Same, same. So do what you got to do to take care of yourselves because I absolutely, what, what state do you guys live in? Ohio. 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 Well, good. You live in a great state. Go get a gun. Okay. I already got one. Yeah, yeah I have one. Yeah, I have more than one. Because as my wife tells me, who was in the military, two is one, one is none. Yeah. True. Yeah. Hey, Daniel, okay. um, would you be able, like, I put myself on video. I don't know if you can see me or not. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Tell you about the dog that's standing behind you? Oh. The what? <laughs> dog. It's kind of like up in your ceiling. I can see your ceiling, so it's kind of up in your ceiling. Um, kind of like a, the way that it looked to me is like a German Shepherd. That's kind of scary. I don't really mess with dogs. <laughs> well, we, we have spirit. So here's the way I'm going to explain it to you so everyone will understand. Okay. That's when true. you wake up in the morning and you do, you do your daily routine and you shit, shower, and shave, however you do it, and then you mm -hmm. go to work and then you do your job and maybe you won't do your job because you're a lazy bastard, I don't know, and then you come home from your job and you eat some dinner and then you sit down and watch some TV with your family and then you go to sleep and you wake up and you do it all over again, spirit is around you 24-7. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, they are around you. They are watching what we do, but they don't really care what we do because you know why? They don't have to do it anymore. They don't sleep. They don't eat. They don't breathe. They don't eat breakfast. Uh, they don't take showers. They don't pay bills. They don't have to drive cars. They don't do any of that stuff. They're just there, and they're just hanging out with each other and having a good time. And uh, But, uh, yeah, they're all around us. 
but uh, you have a dog behind you. Uh, yeah, it looks, it looks like a German Shepherd, but a little bit uh, lighter, like one of those tan looking German Shepherds where it's not so, uh, so much dark fur around it. Um, um, I'm asking, doesn't the dog, the dog is not yours. It's just there. It's like, is it like watching over me or something? Or? Uh, yes, in a sense that you have um, uh, a spirit animal with you. Um, but yeah, it's actually watching over you. But there's something else there around. Can you move your head to the left, your left? Or, yeah, no, I'm sorry, you're right. Because there's something else there with you. Oh, that was pretty simple. Okay. Um, what is it? it? That dog is actually hanging out with your true uh, spirit animal. You have a wolf with you. So uh, the wolf is there as a, uh, as a form of protection. Um, oh, shit. What? Uh, the reason why you have a wolf with you is because, uh, because you have a, uh, unfortunately, uh, you have a bunch of negative people around you. Uh, so these people are always trying to tear you down and trying to tell you you're no you're not as good as uh, as anyone else. Um, they like that. They like to apparently they like to talk behind your back about you. Um, you need to uh, you absolutely need to t tighten your circle of friends because you have some people who are in your circle of friends who are actually not trying to help you in your life. They just want to tell you how horrible you are at your life. Uh, and you, that's very so, true, honestly. I, I, and 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 I mean this in a in a way that I want you to understand it. I don't care if it's your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your best friend, or your so-called best friend, because we always have one of those. I don't care who it is. If they're not helping you in your life, if they're not being a positive force in your life, get rid of them. There's nothing in a book that says you have to talk to anybody. If your mom calls up and says, "Oh, you're being a piece of shit," here's what you can do: click. Have a great day. Goodbye. And never talk to them ever again. You don't have to have them in your life. And here's another thing. The only time, the only reason they're in your life is because you allow them to be there. I want you to get rid of them because if you don't, they're going to continuously try to drag you down and tell you you're not good enough. Because you know what you are? You're absolutely good enough to do anything you want to do, brother. You just have to have faith in it. That's all. I know you're good enough. They don't, so you know what? You get rid of those ones who don't believe in you. That's that's, that's honestly very accurate. Like you're spot on with that. Do you know why I'm spot on with? Why is that? Because you're talking to the fucking medium. That's why. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh that's spirit joke right there, brother. So. <laughs> I, I apologize for my absence. Uh, my children put on a small plate for me, so I had to go watch that real quick. <laughs> oh, yeah, you had a small plate? Is that what you had? Uh, yeah, I got two Can girls I, and one boy. Can oh, I ask you one more question, though, before yeah, I, before I like, stop? You can ask anything you want to. I, I, I kind of want to know what age I'm going to be when I die. I, I, I kind of want to know. Oh, you either kind of want to know or you want to know. I, I really want to know. Like, I want to know. I know how old you're going to be. So what, what so I have to ask you. <clears throat> Do you just want the age or do you want to know why? I want to know both. If I tell you why, um, so I always tell people when I, when I get these types of things, don't ask questions that you don't want the answer to. Yeah. I, I still want to know. Uh, you will uh, actually, so it's not a bad number. Uh, you'll be 76, uh, but you will you will pass away from a debilitating disease. A what disease? 
uh, a debilitating head disease. Um, it's, it's going to, basically you're gonna get it and it's gonna just eventually break you down. You, uh, will, you will get that uh, at the age of 63 is when you're gonna find out. Now I'm gonna be what, 73? Yeah, so it'll be a 10 year, but you're still going to be here for 10 years, but life is not, not always going to be easy at that point. So but, it's going to be like something that's bad that makes me feel bad? Yes. Yeah. But okay. here's the thing. All right. You have control of it, and you could start with that now. So, and that's the best time since you, so you could start, you could do the best you can do to actually take care of yourself. Uh, like if you're if you're a smoker, and I'm saying if you are, if you're a smoker, stop. If you're a drinker, stop. If you're doing you know any other illegal substances, stop. Because if you're if you are if you are doing those things, you're actually helping along what's going to happen to you. Because these types of things break down our body. And then by the time you get to that age when this thing comes on, you're going to be all in a whole horrible lot worse situation. So I'm telling you now to stop doing whatever you're doing. That way, you'll be a healthier person, and it'll be easier for you to handle this. You won't be so uh, sickly all the time. Yeah, I'm a very heavy drinker and smoker of cigarettes. Like very, very heavy of both, honestly. Here's my advice for that. Ready? Yeah. Knock it the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Because it's it's not helping you. It's yeah. not helping you. And I and I understand. Um, I do understand the drinking part of it because you try to use the drinking of the alcohol to, to deal with a lot of depression that you're having, and you need to stop because here's the thing: the only reason you have this depression. Is because you choose to, okay? So, like in this, so in this way, the only reason anyone has depressive thoughts is because they choose to hold on to these thoughts. You tend to worry about things that are completely out of your control, and you let them bug the shit out of you so much that they just become a part of you. It's not going to change. You don't need to do that. You are more than that. You are, and I'm here to tell you, you are better than that. You can be so much more, but when you worry about things that you actually can't control, then these things are just going to eventually tear you down We're inside and you're never going to have faith of, of yourself inside of you. And I'm, I'm telling you, man, all you have to do is just believe in yourself because you got this. But you need to have more faith within yourself in order to pull yourself through this. Because <clears throat> with any, even like alcohol, it's all a choice. Right. So say if I was your best friend, I would say, you know what? I'll take you to AA. I'll take you to classes. I'll keep you away from uh, drugs and alcohol. I'll keep you away from bars. Although who doesn't like a good strip club every now and then? But I would <laughs> bars, you know, because I like strip clubs, whatever. You know, I like, I like making ladies, you know, I like, I was good looking. <laughs> yeah, that's but, true. But, but when, but when I could say and say all these things to help you, but until you choose to stop drinking, no matter what I say or do, it isn't going to make a difference. It's up to you to make the difference in your life. No one else is going to do it. You could go to a doctor. And what's he going to do? Well, he's going to give you some pills to suppress what you've got going on. But suppression is not going to make it go away. Or he's going to do the other thing, which he's going to send you to a to a uh, a specialist who's going to do something. You ready for this? It's the magic pill. Ready? He's going to talk you out of it. You know what you could do? What? You, you could talk yourself out of it. You don't need to go to a doctor for that. If you want to let go of your depression, that's up to you to do. And the only person, because all he's going to do is talk you down from it. You are actually going to make the final decision to stop feeling. So why go to a doctor when you can do this yourself? And do this yourself because you know what? Everything that's going on with you right now, you're the cause of it. You want to do something different? 
change that. That's, that's, I mean, that's honestly like, that's so crazy. You hit that head on like that, though. You know why it's crazy? Because <laughs> I'm the fucking medium, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> So no, I don't know. I don't know if uh, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is I can't make this shit up. I don't know if any of the other guys want to do it. Like what you just did with me and Logan, but uh my sister in law actually she's gonna come on mine and she wants you to see if you can see anything around her or anything like that. Oh, just to... I I can see everything around every person. All right, I'm gonna let her come on just to uh okay, is she good looking? Well <laughs> is <she good> looking? <laughs> My, my brother's right here, right? <laughs> can you, can you tell on. her to wear? Can you tell her to wear a low cut top? I can see better that way. <laughs> All right, yeah. So, just a second. There you go. All right. I do like women with fat asses too. So. Oh, boom! Look at that chick. All right. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm much better now that the chick just sat in front of me. <laughs> You guys can go away. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> um. All right. Let me take a look real quick. Uh, wow, man, that came in. Oh. Can you move your head over to your left a little bit? All right, there's a, there's a man standing behind you. Um, he's got white uh -huh. hair. He's got white hair that comes down. Uh, he's bald on top here in the center of his head, but it comes down here. He's got a full beard. It's white. Um, it comes around his whole face. He's got like the mustache, goatee, but he's got a full beard, white. Uh, his name uh -huh. is. His name is Arthur. Um, he's not. Um, so do you want the answer for this? Yes or no? Yes. Um, so I see I see regular people. And then mm -hmm. I see, what we, I also see what we would call negative energies, and they actually glow red, and he's glowing red right now. Um, so he has, uh, he is a negative energy. Uh, so in other words, he's not a good person. Uh, right. He doesn't, he doesn't have any relation to you. He is just hanging around you. Um, because you yourself also have some activity going on. Especially the people who surround you, uh, and he picked up on that. And the reason he is because because he does pick up on that because of these negative people that are around you in your life, and you actually keep them around you. Um, uh, you're they again. They kind of say things to you, and they're not exactly nice all the time, and it makes you feel kind of horrible inside sometimes. Um, and he is actually hanging around you because, he, because if, when you feel horrible in that way, that's you producing negativity, ne negative energy, and um, and he's going to hang around you because he wants to draw that negativity and energy off of you. So my suggestion for that, again, just like before, get rid of those freaking people. They're not. They're not helping you in your life. They're not supportive. Again, if they're not picking you up and trying to be a positive force in your life and help you to move forward in your life, then why do you have them with you? Right now, I've actually been cleaning out a lot of people out of my life. Good. The last three years. Right, because when I see this guy behind you, when I see negative energies, they glow super duper bright. This mm -hmm. guy is kind of a... Uh, like a like a palish pink something so and what that means to me absolutely is if you're getting rid of these people he's not going to be there for very long 
Uh, right. Which, which is good. So you're doing the job. Now he's there because the negativity is still around you, but you are doing the right thing. Whereas, you know, how some of these people go, oh, I can make negative energies go away or let me burn some sage and all that. No, you right. can't do that. The only way that you can get rid of po negative energy is by being a positive person. It's not you specifically. You're not a negative person, but it's the people who are around you that are causing this negativity that is attracting this thing to you because it's because of them. So mm -hmm. it's just them. It's just them. It's like a, like a, uh, a singer and an audience, okay? The singer can sing all he wants to, but if you don't like hearing the songs out of his mouth, you're going to walk away. And that's right. what you're doing. But because they're still trying to do that around you, that's what's attracting this other thing here. So he's not going to com get completely attached to you because of the fact that you're actually trying to get rid of these people from your life. So you're doing the right thing. So don't, so don't worry about it. But I'm going to look at something else here too. I'm trying to I'm trying to see your aura. I'm not sure what that cover means, but it's very pretty. Uh, your aura is actually orange. Hmm. I don't see orange with people. Most of the time, I see blue or I see purple, but I see orange with you. You should. I'm I'm not sure what that is. You should Google that and, and look it up. You're uh, gonna have to. Yeah, because it's gorgeous. I mean. Besides you being gorgeous, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, it, it's really pretty. I mean, it's like, and it's it's usually I see a, an aura. It's kind of like right above them, but yours is a little bit different. Where I see you, it's I see it's like an extension of you. So what the aura is is the is the light that shines from your soul. Everybody mm -hmm. has it. But yours is kind of like stepped back a little bit and off from you. So it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like a little bit further back and up. So it's, it's uh, that just that just tells me that's very strong. Um, because, it, but, but that's because of the person you are, because you're just, so you're just one of those people who's just like, you're nice to people. You don't let people take advantage of you. You you do sometimes, you'll let them in and they will do some crappy stuff and then you'll actually give them a second chance. But after that second chance, you know, I can't deal with this crap anymore and you let them go, which is yep. good. But, but you are generally like a nice person. Uh, you do have what I would call a, a, uh, uh, a bubbly personality, uh, which is which is like just you're just trying to be as happy as you can be. Uh, mm -hmm. Just unfortunate you have these other people around you who are trying to put you down uh, and trying to take your happiness Hello? away. Uh, yeah. But, uh, I want you to tell. I want. I want you to tell them to do one thing. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I want you to tell them to fuck off because they're oh. fucking with your, because they're fucking with your good your good nature. So, oh, trust uh, me, I've been telling a lot of people that. <laughs> good. I mean, I mean. More or less, in the sense of things, God did not create words, okay? God created us, gave us an ability to make sounds. So we created words. So you can say any word that you want to that begins with the letter F that doesn't sound like fire truck. And really, he really doesn't give a shit. But what he doesn't want us to do is put negative energy on somebody. So I kind of say that jokingly, meaning you can say anything you want to, but, but you know, you can say the word asshole all day long. What he doesn't want us to do is call somebody an asshole all day long. But but the problem is, if they're a fucking asshole, they're a fucking asshole. It's not, that's not your doing. And that's just who they are. So right. All, all you need to do is just exit those people from your life, and then eventually, this thing will go away. But so, other than that, I'm not worried about any other energies coming around you because you yourself are just a good person. And you, you try to put positive energy out there, and they're actually going to stay away from you. So I don't worry about that stuff with you. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And then thank you for letting me come on to read me. Oh, I was jumping welcome. up and down, yelling at my brother-in-law, like, let him read me. Let him read me. Yeah, everybody wants to get some questions answered. Everyone wants to always ask that dying question. Do you have one of those you want to know? Because if you ask me a specific question, I can get the answer for you. It just has okay. to be a specific question. Now, I have uh, a question for you. 
Of course you do. Um, can you, are you able to read people without physically seeing them? Or can you just like tell just like by the sound of their voice or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I don't, actually, I, don't I don't actually have to see, like sometimes I do uh, readings right over the phone and I just, I get things. Why, well, you having difficulty with something. I know you're having difficulty with something. I know you have a decision you've been trying to make lately, and then you have a little bit of difficulty with it. Wait, me? Yeah. Huh. Are you able to tell my aura, or do I? Did you need? Do you need to see me for that? No, I'd have to see you for that. I need to invest in a webcam. So I'm, I'm having trouble making a decision, then, huh? Yes. But it's not, it's not like a real big one. It's not like you're, like it's a life or death situation, stuff like that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just asking them, I'm asking them some questions. That makes wrong. Uh, cool. Oh, okay. No, 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 it's nothing to worry about. So it's more or less um, like before how you say, how I was saying that earlier when you guys, but talk themselves in and out of things sometimes. Uh, you just have a little bit of difficulty with that, but not much because you, uh, you, you like to. They're telling me you pretty much go with your gut all the time. You get a, actually you get a you get a very good sense about things. You pick up on stuff. Well, let me ask them why. What do you mean? I'm gonna. I got something I gotta tell you here in a second. I'm asking them if, if this is the way it's going. So they tell me about you that when you go into a crowd of people, or even about even when you're about to walk into a crowd of people, or even when you're about to walk into a building, you get a sense real quickly about what's going on in that building. It's almost so you can actually kind of pick up on other people's emotions before you even walk up to them. Kind of like a empath sort of way? Yeah, yes, that's exactly what you are. You are an empath. Uh, believe it or not, my uh, my second daughter, Melody, uh, she has that same, you know, that same thing. She can pick up on other people's emotions very quickly. Yeah, so do you. Now, that's not something you pass down from each I'm other. I'm surprised he didn't catch that with me. That's just something you have. And, and the way that that comes through is it just it comes through with your soul, each person. So it's not like you're passing it down to your daughter or your, your, your father. It just comes through with you. I just, the, the reason I got the information is with you, young lady. I'm going to say young because you're younger than me. Uh, it's just because that's a, I just get information that they tell me that's important for you to know. Um, so it, and, and they always want me to tell the important thing. The other stuff, eh. But, uh, but yeah, you, you're actually an empath, and, and I'm, your daughter is, but you are too. Uh, your daughter's a little bit more stronger at it than you are, but you do pick up on other people's feelings, and uh, you get a sense of what kind of person they are, especially when you have to actually deal with them in a personal way, and you can pick up on it pretty quickly. You'll, you're going you're gonna to know if somebody's a good person or somebody's an asshole. And that's a good trait to have, man. If you can work that into your daily life by figuring out people who people are, that's going to help you to avoid all the other garbage that you don't need in your life. And you can just simply go, uh, you know, like if, if somebody was going to help you in some type of business situation, you would actually know if they're actually trying to help you or they're just trying to get one over on you. But yeah, you're actually you're actually a, absolutely an empath. Well, that is. And empaths help people. They they they're they're generally helpful people. As I'm, are you. I want to see if this works. You know, I don't want to. I don't want you to tell me a whole lot about me. I just kind of really want to know my aura. So I'm going to see if this webcam thing works real quick. Somebody's dinging the hell out of me. I don't think it worked. You might just have to use your phone, Rob. Why? What did you want to? What did you want to know for me to see you? Uh, just my aura. Oh. 
Now, well, why he's he's figuring? I know you said eighty two for me when I passed. Um, do you know how? I'm gonna I'm gonna pass just so I can figure out like what not to do <laughs> if I can make. I mean, that's a good age, but you're gonna die. Just, from, uh, you're gonna die from the same thing I'm gonna die from. You're just gonna die. So just it's, natural causes. Yes, absolutely. You're okay. just gonna it's just it's just gonna run out. Your body's just gonna. Yeah, give out. And then, and then once I die, if I do have. it's a business but there's unfortunately a lot of stuff in this business that is just not real and uh, but but the people out there who are doing it know that but everybody else just believes it because they convince them into thinking this is real and and these things work and you can you i i can make i can come in your house and clear out all the negative energies well no the only way you can make them go away is by being a positive person and trying to and try to keep your house as positive as possible. But if you have a bunch of shit going on in your house, then they're going to be. You know where there's a lot of places they have negative energies? Church. Yep. Why? Why do they have so much in church? Because everybody in there is trying to prove to the other person how much of a better Christian they are. So yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. It's, I agree it's a bunch, with that. bunch of crap, man. Bunch of crap. Bunch of crap. Yeah, so just, oh, who's who's got the squirrel? That's squirrel himself. <laughs> that, that, that'd be what, me, what's sir. The squirrel? What's with the squirrel? Uh, it's just a nickname. Okay. Nobody, is anybody here? Nobody's wearing a hat backwards, are you? I don't see any backwards. No, hats. nope, nope. I used to have a hat on backwards too when I was seven, but uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I got jokes, man. Sorry. That's a, hey, man. You know what? You'll, you'll get along great with us then, because yeah. I don't know if you've uh, listened to any of our other podcasts. Just, to, but that's pretty much all we do is just we'll joke around. We'll talk about serious you know stuff. Why? We'll joke around because it because it's a bunch of guys who uh, who can who who've, who've hung around enough times and they can be around each other and they get it. Yeah, we're all uh actually we're all family like me, Robert, and. Uh, well, it's, it says Ashley, but my brother Brian, our brothers, and my cousin Logan, and then Brian Squirrel is uh, a, a good friend. So yeah, we're all we're all related. <laughs> so, really, like, yep. like, are you related in a good way, or are you related like back in Virginia when I lived on the East Coast? It's like, <laughs> hi, I want you to meet my wife and my best friend. Or, you know, and, <laughs> no we're not that close <laughs> we are related though that's for sure i mean have you seen me. each other's anus are you that close no oh, no no no, no. Okay. <laughs> probably not that well 
Well, You're my okay. brother, my brother Robert's in the Navy, so hey. he's probably seen a few. <laughs> 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 One too many. Daniel, I, I have a question for you. Yeah, absolutely. What do you want to know? Um, if, if I have Robert put a picture up of somebody who's already passed on, would there be anything you could tell me about him? Uh, the only – well, there's certain information I can get and can't get, uh, but okay. the one one thing I could, could find out uh, – uh, is if they passed over or crossed over or not, because not everybody crosses over into what we call heaven. Uh, that, sometimes well, that's, they, that's really what I want to know, just if he's yeah. okay. Yeah, no, you can show me a picture. I can let you know. All right, Robert, go ahead and put, put uh, Grandpa's picture up there. Oh, all righty then. You want yeah, second? Robert, and I want, you to, I want you to do the same, actually, for uh, – because for, my grandpa just – our grandpa just passed away back in September, and, like, we were all really close to him, so I just kind of want to – I was hoping, I was hoping when you said someone was behind me, that was him, but I Yeah, you don't have to worry so. about that. Uh, your grandpa has uh, already crossed over. Oh, okay. All right. You're going to have to zoom in on it. You you know what? You don't even have to tell me to uh, show me a picture. What's his name? David. What's it, What's his full name? Uh, David Price. Yeah, he's over. He's um, over. Yes, but um, I'm, a, I'm asking some quick questions here. Um. Once in a while, he comes around. Once in a while, you feel his presence around you, but he's not around a lot. Um, so when you get to heaven, heaven's like 100,000 times better than you can ever imagine. There's no pain, anger, sorrow, no one's suffering. No one, if you leave, if someone leaves and you had an argument with you, stuff like they're not holding grudges against you. There, there's a bunch of crap there. Uh, uh, and and that whole thing about the Bible that you know only 144,000 people get to go to mm -hmm. heaven that's also bullshit as well. There's gazillions of them there. When you get to heaven, you don't just meet up with the two or 300 people you've met here in your lifetime. You know everybody. So when I mean everybody, I mean gazillions. When you get there, you have your name that you have here. But you have all the other names that you've been told, called in all your past lifetimes. But when you get there, your your actual real name, your soul's name, is more like of a sound vibrational thing. Someone's going to call you that. It's going to be like, you're just going to go, and you're going to go, oh, that's me, and turn around. But, right. uh, but uh, yeah, when you get back home, you know everybody. I mean, literally, you could walk up to... You know, he's gone now. You can walk up to Eddie Van Halen and go, hey, Eddie, what's going on? Why? Because you know him. Because everyone knows each other. Because everyone is connected and everyone is family to each other. We're just here to learning lessons and fulfilling a purpose. Uh, so, like, there's that thing where people talk about soulmates. No, nah, not so much. Uh, a soulmate is not necessarily someone you're going to fall in love with. A soulmate is someone who... Back at home, you worked very well with, and you were just hung around all the time. Now you both happen to be here at the same time, and you meet up with each other. Your soulmate could actually be your mom, your dad, your brother. It could be your uncle. It could be a best friend. It could be a dog. It could be a cat, because when you're back there, we're just souls. But there is another thing about that, too. You hear people say all the time, oh, when I'm going to come back next time, I'm coming back as a hawk. I'm going to be a shark. Yeah, no, yeah. That's a bunch of bullshit. No, no. Hawk, sharks come back as sharks and people come back as people. And okay. Just, but, but they also don't hold a grudge against you either. So when you get back home and you meet up with a soul that was a cow, he's not going to be mad at you because you had a hamburger. Uh, they, know the, they know the circle of life. They're not, they understand it. And you will also understand it as well. It's just we don't know a lot of this stuff here because you're here to live the human experience. You're mm -hmm. here to go through life and experience things. Your soul doesn't feel any pain. So maybe there's a point where you end up getting cancer. It's only the body that feels the pain and the body that gets the cancer. But the soul is learning to deal with it. The soul is having the experience of being in that body and how it's going to try to help that body to get through it. Now, but we do have free will. And you can either sit on your ass all day with your thumb up your ass all day and do nothing about your cancer, or you could be proactive and try to do something about it. Right. But, as, but like I say, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no one gets out of this life alive. Right. But, the, but for the fact that 
if you don't fulfill your purpose, they just bring you back again. But there are other ways that you could fulfill your purpose, although I don't see that with any of you guys. But, uh, but there are a lot of people who come into this world and they are what we call disabled, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. those so, so when you come into this world, your soul actually chooses the body it's coming into. And why? Because they know the last time that we're here, it didn't learn the lessons it needed to learn and it didn't fulfill the purpose enough to actually stay home. So they try to go into a body that's going to be a little bit more difficult so it will learn really learn something and then maybe get to go home and a lot of these souls will come into these bodies that are already going to be disabled why because it's learning how to be to be disabled and the other people who are around it are also learning from that person how to deal with that person and those, those souls get to go home and they never come back so which is, which is pretty cool but but is there, how many gazillions of people are there? How many of them are actually disabled when they're first born? Not a lot of them, because it's so odd to us because how does this happen? We think it's just a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's meant to be. It's just how you deal with it in your life, that's all. But that's your life in general. Your life is, oh, maybe I, maybe I turned to drugs and alcohol and I became that. But the lesson to learn is, how do I get out of that? How do I right. change and try to make myself a better person? And, and do you do you do that by using your free will to do that? But not everyone does. We just so if you don't learn that lesson, you'll just go home and you may have to come back again. Mm -hmm. There's another thing that I, I have to clear up with people: is suicide. Now here's the thing. <clears throat> Not everybody is meant to be here for 150 years. No one's not, not everybody is meant to be here at 82. Some right. people, we are here for five seconds, five minutes, five hours, five days, five weeks, five months, five years, 50 years, maybe 100 years, maybe not. You're only going to be here for as long as you're supposed to be here. And if you come in and say you're here for 30 years and all of a sudden you see somebody who just checks out. The reason they checked out is because when it's time for the soul to go home, it will. I have to ask you a question. When you were a kid, any of you, when you were a kid and you were playing down the street with your friends and your mother screamed and said, it's time to come home, get your ass home. What did you do? You got I your got ass, my ass yeah. home. Yeah. Right. Well, what do you think happens when, when God calls your soul home? You go home. So what is it? Home. If your body is a functioning body, that soul will make that body do something in order to get out of here. In the same sense of that, to make, un to make sense of that, if you hang yourself, everybody thinks, oh, he must have hated the world and stuff like that. Maybe that was just his lesson to learn. But when the soul goes home, it goes home. In that same sense, the soul may tell you to wake up one morning and get in your car and go to the mall. So you do, and then you get into a car accident and die. Wouldn't that also be considered suicide? Yeah, yeah. In a way, I suppose. And yeah. it's, it's in the but the world. But the thing is, is the world doesn't want you to know that, because if you knew that about yourself, if you knew about all the things you could actually do in your life without needing their help then they wouldn't be able to have control and power over you. But they want you to not believe in yourself in this world. They want you to not have faith in yourself to do anything. They want you to think that you are walking around as a big piece of shit because that way you will always rely on them for everything. Because there's, there's absolutely, you know, Jesus Christ was actually here, okay? He's not what they want you to make him out to be because he's not a divine soul, like just one. Because all of us were created divine souls. We are all created from, from a part of him that makes our soul a divine soul. So, but we live in a world with rules and laws. And again, who was that created by? All the kings and queens. So, but the reason he came here is he was here to let us know 
that we could all live together as free men and women, has nothing to do with religion, all live together as free men and women, take care of each other and share everything in the world because there's enough of everything in the world for everyone to share. We just have to do it. But the people who were in power and control, religion, the kings, the queens, they scooped him up and they put him on that cross for one reason. They didn't want him saying all this stuff because they didn't want people to believe him because people were starting to believe him. So what did they do? They put him on a cross. They tortured the shit out of him to, to use him as an example to let everybody know if you do what he's doing, we're going to do this to you too. Right. I mean, people wear crosses around their neck. Do you understand? Does anyone understand that when you wear a cross around your neck, you're wearing a form of punishment around your neck? Why would you want to do that? Mm. Why do you want to I wear it? I never even thought about it like that. No, not at all. No. Do you know why they want you to wear that form of punishment? So they can remind you how much control and power they have over you and to let you know if you do like he did, we're going to do that to you too. They may not put you on a cross, but they will torture you throughout your life. They can, they can change your life. They can end your life the way you are living it now just by the snap of their fingers because they don't like the things that you're preaching to other people or trying to get yourself to where you don't need them anymore. And that's, that's the only way we fix this world because the only way we're going to fix it is by taking the power back. We have to stand up at some point and tell everybody who's in government, hey, you know what? You're all fired. Right. Because this doesn't work. Because as the one thing that people don't pay attention to is with the left wing and the right wing. But you know what they have in common? They're both on the same freaking bird. Yep. Yes. They, they help That's each other to, keep, can, to contain that power and control amongst each other so we don't have it. Jesus was here to help us to let us know that we don't have to live that way. But they, what they did is they murdered him in front of everybody to let them know that we, we can do this to you too. That's right. the real reason why he was here. But we are all divine souls because we are all brothers and sisters because we all come from the same place. We can all choose to go back to that same place, but that's a choice as well. If you choose not to go into that light, you'll just remain here as your earthbound spirit. Now, that doesn't mean you can't cross over. You can cross over anytime you want to, but you have to want to do it. But the thing about it is, knowing that you've been here, you know, 27, 28, 29 times, when you stand up out of your body, you're going to get all the perfect memories of your life here. But you're going to get all the perfect memories of all your other lives here. And when you know you've been here maybe 28 times, 29 times, you're going to also know if I walk into that light, I might have to come back again. And maybe I don't want to do that. And then a lot of them stay here so they don't have to do that. That's why. It's, it's not a bad place. There, there's no one there walking around with a set of horns and a tail and, and he's torturing anybody. That's a bunch of bullshit. Uh, now, there may be somebody walking around with horns and a tail, but that's just that's because that's but he looks like where he comes from. Because like I tell people all the time, if you think we're the only planet that has people on it, man, you better think again. Because there's, there's gazillions, gazillions out there. We're just, we're, just, we're just a planet of people who are trying to learn lessons. And if you look out in the world right now, you're not doing a good job. Right. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get there someday. But, but I, do right. also, I do also know other, one other thing. We need to get it done quickly. Yeah. Because as it says in my book that I have, this place is coming to an end. Yep. And I know when. And we don't have much time. Now, it's you, not so, soon. So, it's not so you, soon. Know, you know when the world itself is going to end? Yes. Because we, because we actually ended the last place. But unfortunately, we have a bunch of billionaires taking a bunch of uh, joy rides in these spaceships. Right. Who want to talk about going to the last place we were ever, but we ever were? We were on another planet. We killed it. It's called Mars. And see, I you know what? One of our podcasts, I actually talked about that. Like, what if we, like, not us, obviously, because we were born here, came like humans itself came right. from a different and planet. You have that correct. We came here. We were brought here. 
we were not born on the Adam and Eve or Adam and Steve, whichever you prefer. But right. uh, yeah, we were born, we were brought and born here. Wow. We destroyed That's... that place. The Garden of Eden is not a garden. It's the whole planet. Wow. And we're not doing a good job of keeping it alive. No, I mean, absolutely not. Imagine, think about what we've done in the past, what, 120, 130 years, just by yep. having coal and oil burning. What have we done to this place? This yep. place has been here for billions of years. You know, millions of years this planet's been here. And what have we done to it in the past 130 years? Right. What do you think is going to happen continuously if we keep continue down this path? You think it's going to get better? You think technology can make things better of a place we've pretty much destroyed already? It's not going to happen. This place is yeah. just coming to an end. Yep. It's it's actually in my book. Um, instead of instead of my book uh, saying uh, the, on the last page, instead of saying the end, it says this number because. That number is the end. Mm -hmm. Because, but it's not really the end because life will just start over again right. at another place. And that number that I mentioned in the book also, if you figure it out, gives you the time of when that's going to start again. Because my book is called The New Beginning, but that's what the actual title of the means is we will end here and a new beginning will start somewhere else. Wow. I'm definitely going to have to check that book out because yeah, that's, yeah, know, man. Like I said, we've talked about it and it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that you even brought that up. It's, it's right here. It's called, it's called Daniel Jackson, the new beginning, my awakening as a spirit medium. And okay. the, the, that's the title of the book. The whole book itself is my story about me becoming a medium. Everything that I've seen, I have all the instances that happened, circumstances that happened, all the experiences I've had throughout my life up to the point where right be before I turned 50, when I was seeing my wife went away on vacation for two weeks out to California and I was back in Delaware. And when she came back, uh, she told me about her experiences and I told her about mine. And for two weeks at my home, I saw everything you could ever imagine that was scary in my wow. home, like seven foot skeletons walking around the house, uh, wow. green and red mist pouring out of the walls with skulls floating around with these red eyes bang. I saw what uh, the infamous hat man. Uh, so, uh, I, but I see him on a regular basis now. I know why he's here. He's not actually in spirit. He's actually from another dimension. But, uh, but uh, you see the yeah, hat man on a regular basis. Yeah, about once a month. He's not a horrible person. Uh, the hat man is just from another dimension. And what's going on is the the people he gets paid to come here. So they send him through. And the reason who he comes to see is people like me. And the reason being is because in his dimension, they can't do what I do. They are not in, they are not in communication with spirit. They want to know how we do it. So they right. send him here as like an investigator to find out if he can find some type of trick or something like that to bring back to them. But the problem is, is there's no trick. You have this because you're born with it, but, but everybody has it because we're born with it. It's just when you get a little older, when you get past the age around seven, eight, nine years old, you get taught the ways of the world by everyone else. And that's basically them pouring a bucket of bleach over top of you and, and, and sanitizing you of everything that you were actually born with, which is love and, and, forget, and, and wanting to help other people and be nice to each other. Uh, and then they want you to be horrible to each other uh, so that you don't understand that you don't need them to rely on. Uh, but uh, they want you to rely on them for everything. So uh, they teach you all this garbage so you will rely on them for everything. Uh, but yeah, everyone's born with it. It's just not everybody's meant to keep it. As I explain it this way, some people are just meant to be teachers and everyone else is just meant to be a student. It's just the way it is. So, but uh, yeah, my book chronologically goes along with my whole story all the way up until what I'm doing now. And then at the end of the book, like I said, I'm able to do uh, channeling. Uh, I channeled 25 messages from my spirit guides, which are archangels, 
like I said, they don't have, they're not men with wings. They don't have wings. They don't have swords. They don't have a shield. They're not fighting a battle with anybody uh, in heaven because, as I mean, they want to keep you confused. I mean, think of it this way. If they're fighting a battle in heaven with demons, why would demons even be there? Because they want to tell you only demons go to hell. So if they're all in hell, why would they be in heaven? They're not because there's no such thing as demons either. There's no such thing as a devil. There is a, an angel. His name is Lucifer. He's actually one of my spirit guides. How many uh, archangels do I have with me? All of them. And why do I have all of them? Because I cross spirit over into me, the light. And I have to be protected by negative energies, meaning I could walk into any haunted house on the face of this earth. And you know how they walk up and sometimes they get scratched by something? None of them can touch me. None of them. And I've done it. They just, they can't because they can't get close enough because these other beings, they're just beings of a higher consciousness that no longer need a body anymore. And most of them don't look like people. You want to know what an angel looks like? Lawyer. I see them around me all the time. When I see them in my room, in a dark room, it, they look like seven foot prey mantises staying in, standing in my room. They are what we would refer to as aliens. They're just they don't look like them, they're, so they're just alien to us. They're just, they're just, they know everything, and they are the right hand of God. They just know everything. So that's why when people ask me questions, because I'm connected to them, I can get any answer that I want. Because, and the reason I'm getting these answers is because when spirit want to cross over, they ask me questions, and I have to be able to answer them. So they give me the answers. But in that same sense, if a dog has, has passed away and the dog is talking to me, I hear it as English. I hear everything as English. I know other mediums who don't. They only hear the language that that spirit is speaking. But when it comes into me, it, it translates it and I hear it as English. Because wow. it's just the way that works for me. Like I said, everybody has, there are a lot of people have this ability. There are a lot of people out there who say they have this ability or full of shit. And uh, when they are full of shit, like I just had a lady recently uh, contact me and say she's talking to the Holy Spirit. I said, you're full of shit because there is no such thing as a Holy Spirit because in spirit, there's no religion. You dip shit. So, uh, yeah, I always, <laughs> I always write their names down. I have a list of people that are liars in this business because they want you to believe that they are who they are. And the reason they can't prove it because they don't have any real information. She said to me, she said, well, aren't you having a problem with your left shoulder? I said, no. Would you like to take another stab at that? Well, aren't you having a No. Would you like to take another stab at that? I said, you know, I know you're wrong. She goes, how? I said, because fears tell me you're fucking lying. Wow. Don't lie to me. You can't lie to, you can't lie to a, a, a true medium. And you're trying right. to lie to prove yourself that you're actually this. But I know you're not this. And she said, well, you may be right about that. I said, no, I'm not maybe right about that. I am right about it because you're full of shit. You're just trying to extort money out of people. I said, knock it off. Because if you don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell everybody your name. So stop. So, right. yeah, I have, I have a list of people that just, yeah, they're just horrible. Wow. And why do, they, why do they do it? Because they just want to get money out of it. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're pieces of crap. Yep. Okay, Daniel, I went ahead and switched over to video. Yeah, um, I can see you, big handsome son of a bitch. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to know how or when, but if you want to go ahead and read my aura or anything like that. Um, also blue. General, that's just a general. But I'm being told you're not, you're not, you're not very much the aggressive type person. You're actually a pretty calm person. You're, you're the guy that I would see at a party when I was young, and you would just hang out and chill out and just look around the room and go, "Yep, that guy's an asshole." <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just go hang out with these people. But you just get it. Uh, and that's a, that's a good thing to have. Uh, but yeah, you're not like overly aggressive towards other people. Um, you're just uh, what they would call uh, calm, cool, and collective. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, that's a good thing. That's a good quality to have in your life. Um, I mean, I can't tell you, you're not going to die of anything debilitating, that's for sure. Well, that's good. <laughs> I, 
Um, any spirits hanging around me, or I I do need to tell you one thing though. Um, <laughs> oh boy, yeah, no, no it's, it's something I'm going to tell you. I want you to pay attention to because I want you to avoid it. Because if you don't, you're getting into a really bad car accident. Uh, so um, let me ask him about. So you're you're going to see somebody who's going to be coming into your lane. Um, Uh, yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna see someone who's actually coming into your lane. You're gonna be in the right hand lane. They're gonna come come at you from the left hand. They're just gonna when you start to see them. I don't want you to drive straight. I actually want you to go into the shoulder of the road because if you don't, I'm I'm telling you they're gonna come straight at you. They're gonna they're they're not gonna um, I'm being told they're not gonna sideswipe your car. They're gonna hit your car like to the point where it's gonna take out your where your where your headlight is, so it's going to, it would do some actual uh, horrible damage. Oh. Wow! If you, you know, don't it's... move out of the way, if you don't move out of the way, um, you're going to end up breaking four of your ribs because you're going to go into the steering wheel. It's going to bend it. It's going to break your ribs. And you're actually you are if you don't move out of the way, not only are you going to hit uh, the steering wheel, but your face is going to go straight into the wind, windshield. Wow. It's going to break your nose. It's actually going to break. Already. It's going to. It's going to break your eye socket as well. I don't want that to happen. So when this, when you do see this car coming towards you, I, absolutely just. There's no. No one's going to be in your way. Just move to the side and then go right back. Okay. Good to know because I, I've actually been in a pretty bad accident. I mean, I was lucky and walked away with just a scar on my hand, but it actually crushed the entire side of the vehicle I was in. Yikes. So yeah, that's wow. <laughs> yeah, ne next time you see it, move the fuck out of the way. <laughs> you'll, yeah. you'll have yeah. time. I'm, I'm telling you, you're gonna have time. All right, Daniel. Well, it's probably around that time to start wrapping it up. <laughs> yeah, not even just because I told you, but you're gonna see it coming at you, and you're gonna know. Oh shit, it's like the last time, and you're gonna go and go go. So yeah, you're you're okay. Awesome. Other than that. Was there something else you wanted to know? Um, no, I mean, I, I really don't want to know when I'm going to expire or, <laughs> or how. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to be around here a long time, like the cockroaches and uh, Joan River. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny because my, my wife's always telling me that I'm a stubborn bastard and nothing's going to kill me. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, it's going to kill you. It's the same thing as going to kill me. Death. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You'll be okay. All right. <laughs> Stay away from that fucking car. It's going to, um, yeah. it's going to be blue. Look out for that. It's going to be a blue car. That's funny because yep. I, dri I drive a blue pickup truck. I got a blue one and a brown one. You, 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 you drive a shit brown car. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I got <laughs> I got a shit brown 97 Ram. I have a blue uh, motorcycle and I have another one. It's brown, but it's like root beer. But yeah, I get it. It's not exactly shit, but uh, but yeah. Right, yeah. right. But, yes. When you see the blue car coming at you, move the fuck out of the way. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for the heads yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not something that was going to kill you, but um, uh, I'm told if you don't move out of the way, you'll be in the hospital for three months. Wow. Well, I would I would prefer not to go through all that. So I yeah, you don't appreciate want to be, the heads up. You don't want to be in the hospital because I'm telling you, I've been in the hospital and the food fucking sucks. So yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Don't well, do you it. Can read, you can read mine, but I don't know when. I don't want to know when I'm going to die or anything like that. Uh. Oh. It's rainbow. You're extremely gay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was no. awesome, right? Yeah, I got the jokes. Uh, not just general, <laughs> general blue again. Um. Man, you don't take shit from people. No. <laughs> at all 
<laughs> so it's not not just you don't take shit from people. You let them know you don't take shit from them. Yeah, like you're like like no, nah, I ain't taking your shit, asshole. <laughs> but you you're you're but you um you pick up on it as well too. Yeah. So they try they try to give you you they're gonna they're about to give you shit and you already pick up on it before you uh before they actually say anything and you just and you're just like no 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 don't even try don't even try <laughs> pretty much yeah they uh, <laughs> uh they they can't fool you you're not you're not easily swayed by anyone but you're a good decision maker i try to be <laughs> you're trying real well because you're good at it What do you do for a living? I do painting. Hey, like I said, I'm not a psychic. <laughs> oh, I don't mess with that shit. Uh, <coughs> I'm just trying to. I'm. I'm. They're telling me something. I just want to say this in the right way. That's all. No, you're good. So, like I said earlier, when I when I say um, when I say there's two rules in this world, and everyone everyone's going to die, it's just not a matter of if; it's just a matter of when. Um, you will see a lot of people in your life pass away. Uh, in about ten, in about fifteen years, you're going to see people who are just going to suddenly pass away. Uh, don't take that to heart. Don't take that to to think that. Um, don't don't think about it in a horrible way. Uh, they're just leaving. It's just time for them to leave. But you're going to see. Uh, that many? You're going to you're going to see like uh, within. Two, three months, you're going to see like six people you know who are going to pass away. It's not any of you guys. Don't worry about it. Uh, but you're going to see people uh, like six. You're going to see six people within two to three months who are all going to pass away. Don't. So I don't want you to take it in a way that uh, you're going to think it's some type of omen or something like that. That's all bullshit. Uh, they're just going to be. Uh, and unfortunately, these are going to be uh, close relationship people in your life. So I, I, I don't want you to think, uh, and especially don't take it as like, they're leaving me, they're leaving me behind, I'm, I'm stuck here by myself, that type of thing. It's just their time to go. So there's going to be exactly six people who are going to pass away w within, in about 15 years from now. So you're probably not even going to remember this conversation. So maybe you ought to write it the fuck down. But, uh, <laughs> but, but again, it's just their time to go. Um, so don't take it to heart. Um, And the reason I, <laughs> man, the reason I say that is because even though you're a person who doesn't take shit from people, uh, you care about people. Yeah. More than a lot of other, more than a lot of other people. I'm sorry, they're just putting emotions in. You care about other people. You care about their well-being. You're just that kind of sensitive person to their well-being. You want to make sure that people are just doing okay. Not in the sense that the, you're just worried about their, their happiness, but you just want to make sure that they are okay. You've always been that way, too. You've always been that very kind-hearted, loving, even as a child. You've always just been worried about how they feel and how they are. And that's, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that for nothing. You're always trying to look for the good in people, but you always want them to feel, just to be okay. Right. Because yeah. in this world right now, we have people who are always saying, oh, you got to look out for this person. You got to look out for that person. 
You're just one of those people who tries to. And that's not a bad thing. Oh. You're done. You're not coming back again. This is it for you. Because of being the person that you are now, you don't have to come back. You can continue doing what you do, looking out for people, but it's not super a super thing that you, you don't have to go out and try to fulfill your purpose. You've done it throughout your life this time now because you're always, you're always being nice to people. You cut people breaks. You do things like that. You help them out as much as you can. That's just who you are. This is your last time. So with that being said or being known, when it is your time to go, you're going to go to this holding place. But at that moment, they're going to tell you that you don't have to go back anymore. They're, but what they will do is they will ask you if they want to come back again. I want you to tell them no. Don't just, if there's anything you're going to remember, remember that when you get to that place, because you're going to be very coherent of being there. You're going to be you. You're going to stand up out of your body. You're going to be you. When you get there, they're going to ask you if you want to come back. They're not going to tell you, oh, you got to go back again. They're going to ask you. Just tell them no, man. Just stay. And then that'll be it. And then everything will be fine and dandy. Yeah, you get to you get to go home and stay home. When you get there, look me up. I will. Because we'll laugh about it. Because we'll go, man, that was some fucked up shit down there on Earth. Yeah. That's some fucked up shit. Man. Now I, I have a question before we uh before we we end this. Once now you said in the next fifteen years for him, and you know, like I said, we're brothers, so you said people close to him are gonna pass. Do you know yeah, who? But, but they're just um, they're not family. They're just friends. Just people you okay. know. All right. People, people you have more or less. I, I hate to say it this way, but more or less, uh, people who know the person you are, and you've helped them throughout the years. You just have acquired them, um, so you're just close to them, and they're just gonna they're just gonna basically just gonna start dropping like flies. But you got to know, um, in this world, in the direction we're heading at, it's going to be tougher to live. Right. Uh, some people are just going to be living. Most people are just going to be surviving. Right. And it's not going to be easy for some people to survive. So they're just going to go. Uh, that's all. Um, okay. But it's not going to be a bad thing. Just, you know what? When they leave, they're just going to a much better place where they don't have oh, to Oh, absolutely. Uh, I don't know if they're eating popcorn, but, uh, <laughs> right. but I hope so, man, because I got a movie theater here. It's got excellent popcorn. <laughs> the, the, movies, the movies suck balls, but the extra popcorn is excellent. But, uh, but, but yeah, they don't have to, they don't have to live and, and, and be in suffering in any type of way anymore. So okay. just, just, just feel happy for them that they, they got to go home, uh, but don't worry because when you get there, you'll see them too, and then okay. you get to, you get to stay there. So don't worry about it. All right. Well, okay. is there anything that you want to share with our listeners before we go? Yeah, absolutely. So, well, before I talk about the book, uh, I always tell people all the time, um, don't judge anybody. Uh, when you walk up to somebody and you feel you're about to judge somebody, uh, do yourself a favor and take a self inventory of yourself. And think about all the crap you've gone through in your entire life. And then look at that person and think, you know what? They probably went some through some crap too. And at that point, then you bite your tongue and walk the fuck away because you don't have a right to do it. So uh, yep. uh, other than that, uh, I have this book for sale. Uh, it's uh, You can find it on Amazon. And all you have to do is look up Daniel Jackson and then punch in uh, The New Beginning. And it'll come right up. And you'll see a picture of, of a man standing there. I like the, the, the back end of them. Uh, not that I have a great ass, but, but I don't. I, <laughs> I an ass, but this man, you see the silhouette kind of of the man 
and he's walking into a bright light, and that's basically me. And uh, it's called Daniel Jackson, New Beginning, My Awakening as a Spirit Medium. And like I said, it's a story about me. But the reason I have that story in there is because I want people to do something. If you're having these types of things going on, go out and find your people. Because you're not alone. Because not, there's not just no one else out there who is kind of like me. There's a lot of us out there. And in order to figure out what's going on with yourself, it's a good idea to go out and find your people. But besides that, anyone else in the world, just know that you're not alone. There's other people out there who you can connect with, who can be your people. We should all, in fact, go out into the world and find our and stay away from the people that don't do us any. Uh, so, yeah, so the, the book is called The New Beginning, My Awakening as a Spirit Medium. And at the end of the book, there's a 20, 25 messages called the basics. And these are messages that God wants us to know to help us to try to be better people and to try to be better to each other. Uh, so, yeah, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, again, Daniel Jackson, The New Beginning. You type that in, it'll come up. And the book is only $8 because here's the thing. I don't want to make a million dollars, but I sure would like to help a million people. Right. I, out of that eight dollars, you know how much I I actually make off the book? Two dollars. Wow. Everything else goes to Amazon. So, because uh, uh, they produce the book and they do all that other stuff. But uh, yeah, I make two bucks off of it. So again, I don't want to make a gazillion dollars, but I sure need to help a gazillion people because because it's not me. It's just me uh, being able to distribute the messages that he wants us to know. So. Uh, Yep, you can find me on Amazon. You can also find me on, uh, if you want to get a personal reading with me, uh, it's 120 bucks in person or 100 bucks for a Zoom call. And if that reading lasts for two or three hours, I don't care. As long as you get the information that's going to help you in your life. Because I know a lot of mediums out there charge four or 500 bucks an hour. Yep. They think it's important to have six cars and seven houses and 10 boats. It's not. It's important to have enough. Not to have, there's a word in this business called abundance, and everybody thinks abundance is money, and it's not. Uh, you, you could have an abundance of friends, or you could have abundance of people around you who care about you. That's all you need. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you can find me there at www.spiritmediumdaniel, it's one long word, spiritmediumdaniel.com, and you can book a reading, or you can actually order my book through the website. And you can also find me on Facebook at uh, Spirit Medium Daniel. You can find me on YouTube at Spirit Medium Daniel, where I talk about spirit and I try to teach people about these things. And then you can also find me on my own podcast. It's called Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson. Me, Daniel Jackson. And uh, that's at www.beyond-the-veil.com. And we're on Facebook with that. But if you go to the website... Uh, you can see all the shows that we've done, but also what I do is I put links up from all the other shows on that I've been a guest on for the fact that, uh, again, we all need to help each other. So mm -hmm. maybe people will be able to listen to me on your show, but what I want them to do is listen to your show so they can find another show to listen to, not just listen to mine. So, uh, right. That's what I try to do. So, yep, that's at www.beyond-the-veil.com. And, and I call the show Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson because I don't know how this is going to make sense, but uh, when I looked up Beyond the Veil online, uh, there's a shitload of them. And uh, one of them, the very first one that came up, was all about reading Harry Potter books. What that has to do with Beyond the Veil, I have no freaking idea. But okay, but if that's what they want to go with, but yeah. But uh, yeah, you can pretty much find me anywhere. As long as you put in Spirit Medium Daniel, you'll be able to find me. Or if you say, like with the book, it's just Daniel Jackson, The New Beginning, you'll be able to find me. All right. Well, there you have it. That's all I got, man. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, there you have it. Well, go ahead. Da and, uh... Daniel, again, thank you for, for coming on. I think you opened up a lot of eyes for people that were listening to what you do. So. We would love to have you on again or even be a guest on your on your podcast. You know, absolutely, just uh, man. but absolutely. Thank thank you again for coming on though for sure. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on. And uh, oh as I tell everyone in my uh, 
uh, and that I come in contact with, and you guys need to listen to this. You're you're ready? Yeah. Be good, and don't do any stupid shit. <laughs> All righty. Well, I will take that to heart. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. makes perfect sense. Or if you're going to do some stupid shit, don't get caught. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All righty, well. Think- when you, guys right, get, well, when you guys when you guys actually put this, is, is this online now or is it going to be online later? Oh, we're live now and we're going to put oh. it on our YouTube channel later. Okay, when you get ready to do that and you're going to, you have a link for it, send me the link so I can put that on my page so people can go there and watch it too. And then like, like again, and then they can discover your show so they can listen to you any other time. Absolutely. Sounds good. Cool beans. All right, bye. Well, all right. Well, thanks again, Daniel. This has been the Bearded Brothers Podcast with your hosts, <laughs> yeah. Merle, Robert, Logan, Stephen, and Brian. Thanks, folks. You have a great night now. Bye-bye.